I'm just gonna be super honest with y'all. When I'm stressed out, I cast stuff on. I think we got this lighting like semi kind of right. Maybe y'all will be able to see my eyes. I'm just gonna live my life like a manga character. Y'all, I have so many <laughs> things to show you. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little excessive. I mean, my defense. It has been a long time. A supporting point. I also, when I get stressed out, I cast on a lot of things. I'm just like willy nilly, like <laughs> looking like Oprah. So I've tried to be as organized as possible. I gave myself a little list on my snoop pad. You say four scribbles. <laughs> and I'm just gonna try to go through as many things as quickly as I can. I'm gonna try my hardest to make it digestible for everybody. I have all the timestamps. So if you're like, man, that does not tickle my fancy. You can just move on about your business and just skip next chapter. I got you. I'm gonna take extra special care this time to make sure everything is listed in the down bar below. But y'all don't come for me in these comments cause I know you will. I already know you are gonna be in the comments like, girl, where have you been? We have been waiting impatiently, commenting on every social media platform you're on. <laughs> so I'm mentally and I think spiritually as well already prepared for that to happen today. So maybe we start off easy, what I'm wearing. If you follow me over on Instagram, some of y'all have already seen it. This is my new Rota top. Let me see, can I do a weird squat? Oh, here we go, girl. Y'all didn't know I was gonna serve you weird squat today, but here we are. <laughs> It's already starting off excellent. I'm going to insert a video because this is silly. This right here is my Rota Top by Irene Lynn. I am obsessed with her. I think she's so freaking cute. I literally knit this up in order to wear it on a vacation to New Orleans. Girl, I had so much shrimp and grits, it was disgusting. So I knit this up specifically to go on that trip because I bought this yarn at a lovely shop down there, Quarter Stitch, down in the French Quarter. They're Super cute, shout out to them. I bought this, this is the Blue Sky, I think it's their Erin Cotton Worsted. It's lovely, a pleasure to knit with. I really thoroughly enjoyed my experience with it. Loved it so much that I went down there and I bought two other colors to make other tops, one of which I've already cast on, but I am gonna make one more of these in like a bright pink. If you are not a tank top girly, don't worry. Irene said, <laughs> I got you. He has the same Rota top in a Rota jumper, which is equally as adorable. And you can also choose to do whatever you want for the body length. You can see here, weird squat time. Mine is definitely very cropped. You can make this as long as you want. I also chose to do the side split optional thing that she has going on a lot earlier than she suggested, mostly because she has a picture styled where she's kind of done those same modifications and I loved the way it looked on her. So I was like, Irene, girl. You got it going on over here. Like, let me just, let me holla at your style tips real quick. <laughs> so I snatched that up from her. But I figured since we're talking about what I'm wearing that I've finished since I've seen you last, so let's talk about other things that I've finished. There's just one, but you guys have been very, very excited about it and very, very upset with me that it's not released yet. So hopefully by the time that this video goes out, it will be like almost time because y'all are all up in my DMs right now trying to find out when you can knit this. Bum, 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 bum. Ta-da! Ain't she cute though? This right here is the mini mock neck tank. This is a soon to be released pattern by Jessie Maid. I love her man. She doesn't make a bad design. And this super cute guy, I knit this one out of magpie fibers. Also just a disclaimer real quick. I have been knitting a lot of samples for work. So this is gonna be a very magpie fibers heavy episode. Normally I like to infuse a lot of other stuff with all of the other things that I'm making. That's not the case this time around. So y'all cut me a little slack in these comments don't come for me with like, she only knits with girl right now, yes. Okay, we'll be back to our normal programming in just a moment, okay? Just let me get through some of these projects. So this one is out of Solo Fingering, which is Magpie Fibers Single Ply Base. And this is a cute um, pose for me. <laughs> Plume Lace, which is our cashmere lace base. Cashmere and silk, girl. So I held those two together for this top and it is scrumptious. What I've found is that when I hold a lace weight cashmere, we're just gonna stay like this for the rest of the time, a lace weight cashmere or a lace weight mohair or a lace weight alpaca, right? All of those things add more drape to your garment. For me, sometimes I want to keep that structure even though I want the softness of what's happening with the cashmere, the mohair, whatever. I decided to use a single ply, very sticky merino because I wanted that to happen. 
I wanted this to have just a little more structure to it. I wanted to make sure that you could really get the shape of this mock neck and not lose that at all as it starts to grow with time as all garments do. All garments grow, baby. Very pleased with how this one came out. I think maybe we just do this for the rest of <laughs> rest of this episode. I don't even think I introduced myself. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Kayla Fernandez, sometimes Marissa. That's why this podcast is called the Marissa Made Podcast, where I tell you about all the things that I've made and or are making, because there's a lot of them right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. Most of the time we talk about creativity. Some of the time we talk about nonsense, but all of the time we're just here for the vibes. We're here for the inclusive crafty vibes. Well, if that sounds like your cup of tea, hit the follow button, like the video. It don't cost you nothing, girl. I know you can just hit that thumbs up button real quick. Boop. And uh, holla at your girl in the comments to say hey. This one is coming out soon. I may or may not knit this one again. Like, I think I might. Because it's been a long time since I've gotten as many compliments as I've gotten between these two knits. This one and this one. This knit especially has been a... Uh, you knit that? Those kind of comments, which I love. My <laughs> ego takes those and just goes, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> and then this one is definitely noticed by a lot of knitters and knitters immediately go, you made that, didn't you? How can I make that? Can I make that also? When can I make that? It's a lot of that. <laughs> Two patterns, highly recommend both. Only modifications I made to this guy was I added a little bit of length because your girl has got a torso. Every single one of Jessie's patterns, I gotta add like a solid two and a half to three inches because she'd be like, drop it. And I'm like, ma'am, that's my under boob. Everything else I did two pattern. All right, I am terrified, but we have to talk about all the things I have in progress. <laughs> Let me consult Sir Snoop. Oh. I've got things like organized a little bit. They're organized into groups of types of pattern. I have sweaters and tops and shawls. She's only one of those, but you know, she didn't really fit nowhere else. So she got her own category. Oh, that's a lot. And then I got one more category, which is crochet. I love crocheting in the summertime. Let's start with tops. Let's start with my most recent cast on, which is the Major Look Top by Ocean Knits. I'm sorry, I'm gonna touch my glasses a million times today. I don't know what it is about my nose, but it refuses to keep the glasses on them and they end up over here on my upper lip, like a glasses mustache, if you will. Made You Look haul situation by Ocean Knits is incredible. Every single one of the patterns are so cute. She's got it in a short sleeve, in a long sleeve, in a dress. Girl, I don't even know how many iterations she has now. I just want one. I just want one. And so since it's summertime, we're doing a tank top. And I am doing it in that same blue sky that I mentioned earlier. Is she cute? <laughs> She's very bright. And if you're new here, I, Kayla Marissa Fernandez, I am a lover of the bright colors. My color palette is always gonna say excuse me sir ma'am esteemed human i have arrived and i would like for you to acknowledge my presence <laughs> true to form for those of you who are ogs here you know i always stop in the middle of a row so the way that this is constructed is kind of cool you do have to do true twisted ribbing twisted it twisted pearls for all of this like almost gives a very corset type of wow snoo so twisted pearls not my favorite <laughs> twisted pearls and cotton but I want this so bad and also because this is a tank top and I've literally knit on this for two days and I'm already almost done I mean I think I, I'll live I'm gonna have thighs burning today so this guy comes up underneath here wraps around and then this will build out almost like a peasant blouse type of vibe across my bust to come up to here now this again is like a very made to measure pattern you can use your cup size and use your rib cage size and then pick the appropriate size for you some people are gonna want to be like hey and some people are gonna be like hey you know but you do you i got a little ways to go i'm just forming the cups now and then it'll be some strap situation and the corset and then I'll be done. I'm still not sold on the corset to be totally honest with you. This is ribbing. We are stretchy. I'm kind of thinking that if it meets close enough in the back, I'm just gonna sew it up the back. Pro tip for anybody considering this, I could, it would be a different texture, but I could pick up the stitches here and do, um, oh, I always mess up how to say this. Crocheted slip stitch to the back loop 
only stitches. Why is that such a mouthful? In order to get that kind of same effect as this and close this up, because I just don't want to deal with having to tie it. And I also have a lot of children and some of them like to play jokes on me. And I don't need to just be all of a sudden naked in the giant grocery store. That seems like not a great time for me. Maybe a great time for everybody else, but She's almost done. I feel like I should have her finished by the time I talk to y'all next because there's only so much that you can cover in a tank top. Okay, next top. Maybe this one. Speaking of, the lovely Jessie made. Jessie has a pattern that I have made so many times. It's almost ridiculous at this point. Uh, the only one that I haven't done is the outline raglan, which is like a full on sweater. I, honestly, I don't know why I probably should make that one too because I would wear the heck out of that one too. I wanted to make another outline tank, but this time I wanted to kind of like, Juju it up a little bit. Okay, so the out, ooh, that's my puppy, so sorry. And so I'm making again in this really cute, like light pinky orchid color. I love, I love, love, love. So no bud, you have to, you can't be in here. Stand, oh, hey, are you trying to join? Did you scare that FedEx man away? Is he all gone? Is he gone? Did you take care of him? You take care of him, okay. All right, well, now that he has been compensated for his hard work, well, this outline tee is super cute. I wanted to knit it in this really cute, like, lavendery pink color. But then also, I wanted to do something like a little extra, extra. I decided on the opposite side, you basically just do the same thing on both sides and then do the drop stitches, right, for this little tank top. On the opposite side, I decided that I wanted a reversible tank top that would have two different options for me to put in the front. So on the back side, instead of decreasing down the center and then creating those two like triangle points right across your bust instead I'm only decreasing on the sides so that I can make basically a high neck square necked top I'm excited <laughs> I think it's gonna be really cute I just got to make sure that my drop stitches line up because as you can see here I haven't dropped them yet as opposed to this side which already has those drop stitch details it's a really fun pattern to knit because you're all of a sudden you're like oh my god am I really gonna do this am I really gonna purposely make a mistake am I really gonna drop this stitch off the needles and just trust in whatever savior you've got that this is gonna work out yes you are and it's gonna be okay Okay, <laughs> so that's what I'm working on here. I have a little bit to go. I need to attach another ball, which is why I stopped on this one. You will find that that is kind of a recurring theme. <laughs> There's something going on that I have to do before I can do the next thing. And so that's why I've stopped on some of these projects. But this guy right here, I just need to attach a new ball and then keep going. Once I do that, this will be done. I think I can finish it in like a night. We'll see. Almost forgot to tell you what kind of yarn this is in. This is in Magpie Fibers Equinox Sport, which is a 65% silk, 35% linen base. Mm. You're talking next to skin cool, lots and lots of drape. Is, is, as you will find out in just a moment, one of um, my personal favorite bases. It is bringing me much hot weather happiness. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to like feel motivated to still like craft during the summer, especially for fiber arts, because you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna make that's not gonna make me also feel hot and sticky. Get you a good summertime, cool to the skin base. Your creativity will get reinvigorated every single time. Next, we bike. So this lovely cutie, I don't know if you can actually like see, see it. Hold on, let me put my arm in it. <laughs> Maybe. I'll insert some photos. This cutie is my current whip for the As If Light Tea by Shay Johnson. Um, Shay is an incredible, incredible designer. She's also the homie, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> She's really freaking cute and innovative and she released a very, very popular pattern um, a few years ago called the As If Tea. Yes, as in... Oh, as if. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. She has been like teasing about this lighter weight version because the As If Tea is originally knit in like an Aran to bulky weight yarn, right? I think that's where your gauge ends up. She was kind enough to acquiesce and let all of us join in on the As If Tea light shenanigans and I have never been happier. This is my As If Tea light, again, heavy on the magpie. This one is also in Magpie Fibers. This color is called Disco Inferno. And cause baby, I'm gonna give you burn, baby. Burn in this, all right? <laughs> I am super, super excited to get this off the needles. I will say like on a personal, personal note, I am not a fan of knitting lace weight on large needles. I think it's mostly because I knit so fast that I often find myself not catching that 
one little lace strand and there is nothing that sets me off than a repetitive tick of something going wrong. <laughs> taking me a little longer than I thought it was gonna take. Also, I was definitely ready to like seam up my shoulders and my coworker, Francesca, shout out to you girl, so sweetly looked me in the eyes and went, that is definitely not seven and a half inches. I don't know what math you think you're doing. <laughs> pulled out a ruler and sure enough she was correct and I had decided that I was done like two inches too early that's a lot even for me <laughs> I went back I finished the back panel which is knit all in just a lace weight yarn held by itself mine is plume lace again that cashmere lace and then this the body I knit mine again in that solo fingering to give myself a little structure in the body on the front side there is an illusion neckline happening across the top you're holding these two together here for across your bust area but then you're doing some really cute intarsia shaping to get that bust shape across for my bust since I am the maker of my own making that doesn't make any sense <laughs> because I am the master of my own creativity that's what I was trying to say and you are too I decided that her original pattern the shaping on the bust is kind of very triangular and I wanted it to feel a little more sweetheart neckline shape-ish so I did some modifications across the top and I will when I put up my Ravelry project page when this is completed I will include those in there and then I'll talk about it again when this is done because I need to get this done because it has to be done because this was supposed to go in the window of the magpie fiber shop um, for pride month and we's already deep into June baby so <laughs> I gotta finish this guy, take pictures, and then hand it over to Samantha before she comes for me. Love you, boo. <laughs> I also think it's gonna look super cute. I am gonna wear her out on one date night at least so that my mans can get the full effect, you know? <laughs> All I have left is seaming up the top of the shoulders, and then from there, you pick up for your neckline and then pick up for a small amount of ribbing right here on either side of these panels for your sleeves. That's it. So I'm so close. I'm ready to be done. Ready to be done. Next. Oh, I think she's all tangled in everything else. So oh, everyone's so surprised that this is happening to me. Didn't you miss this about me? I just, just cast this on. There's not much to see. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just cast on the best vest by James Watts. Shout out to literally the most incredible pattern name ever. <laughs> I love it. It's from the bottom up and I am going to knit it for forever. I just finished the ribbing. I'm now on the body. So I am going to have stock in it for forever. And this is going to be like my comfort project for a very long time because I want to knit this particular vest as long as freaking possible. I would like for it to go like over the butt. This going to take me forever. It is in worsted weight, so there is that. I'm knitting it in quartet worsted by who? You guessed it, Magpies. I will say that I really missed like having a very bouncy project on the needles, like a very bouncy yarn. There is something really soothing. I don't know, just like it tickles my little neurodivergent brain just a little bit. Yeah, all I wanna do is basically knit on this because my brain needs to shut off because it's always going like 47 miles an hour and this is like the perfect, let me talk to somebody, let me watch watch TV, let me do literally anything and not have to like look at it and pay attention. So that to me means project perfection. Ladies and gentlemen and esteemed humans, we've finished the tops section. Go us. Ah, there's so many more things and I know I need to tell you about them, but I also gotta take a break because man, it's shameful. And yes, this is Strawberry Fanta from Wendy's because I'm a walking, talking Southern stereotype definitely feel like that's gonna be the thumbnail <laughs> just confuse the heck out of everybody why is she holding up a wendy's beverage so to keep it interesting i feel like we move from projects that are making me the unhappiest to projects that are making me the happiest we'll do like a whole up the scale i know you like that sound effect who needs final cut pro and that way i can kind of explain to you why things are in timeout and then also explain to you why things are progressing as fast as they are because they're making me so happy first off the biggest timeout baby there is. Dad just made that up. That's not a real phrase or idiom or none of that, but girl, it's making me so mad. <laughs> And it is from no fault of this pattern. It is purely from my own self, okay? This incredible pattern that you're gonna see these colors and go, oh my God. 
Kayla, that is so cute. Look at it. Isn't it so cute? This is the Gerhard sweater by Colibri by Joanna, which is Joanna Garish. I wanted this sweater done so bad. It was not I that decided that I could not finish the sweater. It was this very specific ball of yarn. <laughs> In order to get gauge for this project, I needed to hold Swanky Sock, which is a fingering weight yarn double with a lace weight. I was fine with that because I was so happy with the colors that I had. I kind of stashed dough for these. All of them made me super, super excited. It's very much giving like disco retro rainbow. Here for it, right? My silly self. Instead of winding said yarn into two balls, because that's what would make the most sense because I knew I was gonna have to hold it double. I was like, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna hold it double from the inside of the cake and the outside of the cake. This brown yarn begged to differ. It said, baby, I don't know who you think we is, <laughs> but you did not wind this cake correctly to proceed in such a manner. So <laughs> I have been fighting for the entirety of the sweater. So the entire body, I had been fighting that skein. Everybody else cooperated except for that brown. And then I got to here down to the ribbing and then it just did this. And I went, no, thank you. I can't, I just was so mad, <laughs> so mad. It was starting to get hot outside, but I just, I was angry. This is a beautiful sweater though. I really, really like how she does the sleeve detail across here. Look how cute that is, how cute it matches up. It's a drop shoulder construction, but then you'll come back over here and pick up for a super cute um, double, how do you say that? Double folded rib? No, doubled rib? No. Folded over rib hem. God bless it. <laughs> I should have been drinking coffee and not strawberry Fanta, which will be super cute, but I need to do that in the brown. So what I have to do is unattach everything, get it all off. And then once I do that, I need to wind them into new little cakes so that I can proceed with this project. I can tell you right now from touching this, oh, something I didn't mention is that all of my stripes are marled with a skein of white cashmere lace. You could do the same sweater in mohair or surrey alpaca, whatever. Let me just say this too, because I know that like I talk about plume cashmere lace a lot and I know that it is super expensive. There are so many super affordable. Drops Kid Silk is lovely. Um, Sandness Garn has the Tin Silk Mohair, which is also lovely. And I'll link those down there below for you. So if you wanted to get a similar effect to this, all I did was take a white lace weight, which mine is the plume cashmere lace. I held it together with all of my colorful stripes. And then for the brown stripe, I used the same exact color. So I held that on itself with the same color, if that makes sense. Hopefully it did. And if it didn't, y'all will leave me a comment because y'all be like, girl, sometimes you be speaking gibberish. And I appreciate when you guys just call me out on my shit. So that's this guy. He's gonna be so freaking cute. I can't wait to wear him with so many outfits. I'm looking at myself in this mirror right now, mostly because I literally am wearing these green pants and he would look so cute with these green pants on. Ugh, I want it. I just have to deal with this and I don't want to. Gotta deal with this to get to this. I can do it. Less annoying project, but also annoyed with myself. I finally cast on my Seasons card. Oh, the double pointed needles are everywhere. I finally cast on my Seasons cardigan by Ozetta Designs because I told y'all at the start of this year that I was mad at everybody. Everybody had one except me. I don't like feeling left out. I finally cast one on and I'm knitting this one in Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. All of the things that everybody has told you on the interwebs about this sweater being super fiddly are correct. <laughs> I love it. The finished object is gonna be so freaking cute and I will wear this thing every day. A note about Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. You guys know that I talk about Drops Air all the time. Knit Picks Wonder Fluff, if you cannot get access to Drops Air, is an incredibly, credibly close dupe to it. I... I'm doing it in this really cute like aquamarine color. I think it's just gonna be super fun. I am at a standstill right now, not because it's fiddly, because once I got into the rhythm of you have these like 
double pointed needles. Hold on, let me put this in a better view. Double pointed needles that are your button band happening here, right? And so the double pointed needles are happening because they're a smaller needle gauge than the size of your regular sweater. So you're doing these raglan increases in fisherman's rib while you're doing a double pointed needle situation for your button band. It's a lot happening. Okay, and within a lot happening, your girl messed up her fisherman's rib. It's like a couple rows back, and so I have to drop down and fix it, or I have to tink back and fix it. I just got out of pattern and out of whack. It pissed me off because I was really happily knitting this. Like I was very happy to be knitting this. So I'm just gonna put in a lifeline and just rip it all out. Mostly because I don't wanna tink because this yarn tends to felt to itself. And anyone who's ever experienced that, number one, I'm so glad you're okay. But number two, it's not fun. So I'm gonna give it a minute, let it chillax. I'm probably gonna throw it in the freezer. Pro tip, if you um, have a yarn that felts um, and that you're trying to rip back out, like say like a mohair or any kind of lace weight that really clings together and is a pain to rip apart, throw it in the freezer for like a minute. Like don't throw it in the freezer for 10 minutes and take it back out and think you're gonna be good. Like, no, it needs to be cold, 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 cold. And then it'll be a little easier to rip. Will it work always? No. Is it helpful? Yes. You're welcome. So I am mid tinkerudida over here. And so I'm working my way back. But honestly, my plan at the present moment is to get some of these smaller projects done. Once I get those done, I actually really, really, really want to finish this because I think this is like the perfect thing to throw over all of them. And they also, in my colorful era, combine really well. I still think that this is going to be a finished object. If you're considering this and all of my comments about it being fiddly and whatever put you off, don't let it be. I sincerely think that this is one of the finished sweaters that I have seen that every single last person looks incredible in. Every single last person I've heard talk about it is like, I wear, I wear this sweater to death. Um, and that's, I mean, what more can you ask for in a project? You know, I would not recommend this as a gift in it for anyone. Oh man, it's so squishy though. Look at that. Reek, 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 reek. <laughs> Next, I know I told y'all there was a lot of projects and y'all probably didn't believe me, but I bet you believe me now. This guy has been in timeout for literally no reason whatsoever. Only because I have to think so hard in order to do him, but look how beautiful. I feel like the color is not even like coming across in the way that it needs to. This beauty is the Hellia sweater by um, Joanna on. I'm gonna put my arm through the sleeve because I need y'all to appreciate all these cables that your girl did, okay? Like this was a lot of cables, all right? Appreciate them. <laughs> Still working on the first sleeve and I'm at the decrease portion for the first sleeve. And because of that, I put this to the side for the moment because it's a lot of thinking that has to happen for this. You're following charts, you're following a decrease schedule. I love the way that this fabric feels. I am using the La Monacomo, which I feel like has been going around lately. People have been real into it. And then I'm using Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Uh, their alpaca silk base, what is that called? Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm holding these two together to get this really, really beautiful like halo situation. The sweater itself is super light and fluffy. By the time I finish this, I will definitely not be able to wear it at all. Like some of these other sweaters, I can definitely kind of rock them on a cooler night in, um, in here in Maryland. Not this one. <laughs> not this one. We're waiting for fall for this one, okay? Like maybe you'll get lucky and you maybe see me style it, but like it's gone in the closet. It's not coming back out until the fall. <laughs> so that's kind of why I'm not super motivated to finish it, but I would like to have it to wear in the fall. So I need to get my life together. Wanna Fanta, don't you wanna wanna Fanta? Sweater project that's making me the most happy above all else is the Salty Days sweater by Veronica. I don't know her real name because I call her Kutavakika all the time. I love her stuff. I love her. She's just started designing in like the last, I don't know, like year and a half now. Her designs are incredibly beautiful and classic. We have previously talked about the Guernsey Answer in past videos. If you haven't seen those, watch those after this. <laughs> And people were having a really hard time finding that magazine, which has that pattern inside of it. Veronica did us all a favor and she made the Salty Day sweater. And it is a really cute, traditional, like Guernsey, Gansey type of sweater. Let me see if I can get mine situated for you. And this is mine. And I decided to knit this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> in this super bright blue. Oh my God, I love it because I think I want to look so cute in this color. So this one is going to be knit in sand Niskarn in their double Sunday and in their tin silk mohair. And I am using two colors that actually don't match match, which is like my pro tip, pro tip. I tell you guys all the time, if you get a yarn that is a little, let me put it in front of my face that is a little lighter and or darker than another colorway. When you put those two together, when you marl them, they just give such a beautiful like dimension to your project. I don't know if you guys can like catch that halo, but oh my God, I'm obsessed, obsessed with the fabric. Some of you might remember that I was having a little bit of sensitivity to mohair, still happening. <laughs> It's much less now in my hands, so I can knit with it. I cannot like wear it close to my neck or on my body. So this is a sweater that I'm gonna have to wear with like long sleeves on underneath, which honestly is totally fine to me because if anyone has met me in real life, you'll know that I'm chronically cold all the time. Tropical people vibes. I, I just, this is giving me so much joy. There's something really lovely about the fact that it almost feels like a sampler in the fact that you're going through these different sections of like chart A and now I'm moving on to chart B and now I'm doing chart C and whatever. That for my little ADHD brain keeps it really engaged and continuously like thinking about what is the next thing. I just need to finish this to get to my next little dopamine rush. So. <laughs> For any of my other ADHD girlies, like this might be the one for you. And this color is just making me so happy. For me, the signs of like a hugely versatile pattern is one that looks incredible in a very striking color like this, but also looks just as good in a classic color, like a black or a white or a gray or a cream. For me, when I can visualize those things, I automatically know this is a pattern that's gonna go. Very excited to eventually have this guy. I'm gonna have a lot of thumbnail options. I'm not gonna lie to you. You guys, we made it to crochet. Don't worry, I'm not gonna talk about yarn acquisitions, none of that, y'all don't care anymore. You're like, girl, we saw them. They're all in your projects. <laughs> Let's talk about crochet. I am knitting two of the same kind of project, which is kind of cool. And then I'm also knitting something that's very different. So let's start with that. I first, this is not much to see right here because it looks crazy because um, it's just one piece. But that's the start. Oh my God, how freaking cute is that? <laughs> so this is the front panel for the Zora. Well, I guess it's the Zora top, the Zora top, the Zora vest. Unclear because it is a four in one pattern, which is kind of cool. So you can create this as a vest you can create it as like just the sleeves itself like if you wanted to do like a bolero type of vibe you can add the sleeves to this there's so many modifications for it I love it I love a very versatile pattern so this is the front panel I've got to make another one of these and then I need to do the sleeves and then I will pick up for the neckline so this comes like pretty low here and then your shoulder piece I actually still have to do the shoulders too because this is just like this here and then I'll pick up here and come across the shoulder um, and then connect to the back piece. I'm pretty excited about this one, mostly because this is the color that I've been definitely gravitating towards this summer. Love it, it screams summertime to me, it screams happiness to me, which is definitely what I'm looking for right now in my life. Hey stress, hey burnout. Out of a yarn from Big Box. If you're a yarn snob, I don't care. <laughs> This is from Michaels. This is the loops and thread cream, cream or creme cotton. I don't know how you pronounce it. This is one of my favorite cottons to use ever. I think it's so soft. I think it really does a good job of holding on to the color. Like the colors on this specific cotton, I think are more vibrant than other cottons. And I think that has to do with something about the way that they ply this yarn. But this is definitely a yarn that I would not recommend for anything that you need structure in. It is going drape, 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 baby. Like I'm not not joking. Look me dead in my eyes. This is not a game, okay? <laughs> but I love this yarn and I probably will make another one of these if this comes out as cute as I think it is. I learned new stitches in this one. Solomon's knot, which is here at the bottom there. 
such a cool crochet stitch. I just feel very like a very accomplished crocheter with this project right now because I learned so many new things and did so many new shaping things. Shout out to her. Shout out to Zora for teaching me all kinds of new things. So the other one that I'm making is the Khaled shirt, which I have been in very similar colors. I have been influenced by literally everyone. I feel like everybody is making this shirt, so I'm making it too. It's this super cute, oversized, lacy colored tee, which I love. I think it's so cute. So I have made one of my panels. Whoop. This is my front panel for my first one. Man, I'm in love with these colors. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but just imagine, if you will, that it's not a serape and instead it <laughs> pulls over this way and has picked up collar detail that comes from here around that gives you kind of like a camp collar kind of vibe. And then there's like a little tiny bit of extra sleeve, like probably to like a little shorter than this black one that I have on and that there's two of these. <laughs> <laughs> with some buttons down the center. I think this is really cute. I think it's gonna be a super cute like beach cover-up situation. I am already highly contemplating doing like a cute little um, tank top or something in this color. In this, this, this one right here is called Tupelo Honey. This coral right here is a one of a kind colorway, sorry. And they're both from Magpie Fibers. This is the Equinox Sport again, which is that 65% silk, 35% linen base. <laughs> um, it's gonna be great. So I'm working on the second panel now, which is not much to look at. Oh, cause I lost my hook. Well, which is not much to look at because it's on a teeny tiny. I, in order to get gauge, I needed to do a 2.75 millimeter hook. It's small y'all, <laughs> that's what she said. But this is actually like what I have been gravitating towards the most. I am a super slow crocheter. It takes me so long to do things, which seems antithetical to everything, right? I thought crochet was supposed to be faster. Not I. Jesus made it fair for me and I'm not fast at that. So I can't wait to finish this because I really need to wear this this summertime. I think it's going to be so freaking cute. And I literally want every single person to think that I bought it from free people and I didn't. I made it. <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, and then I have something very similar to show you, which I have not picked up in a while, but I was really, really loving at the time. So this is Equinox in Equinox also, but this is the Equinox worsted and i haven't touched this in so long that i'm actually not sure what's happening anymore oh i know okay so this is an equinox worsted this is actually a collared shirt as well but my head would go here instead this is the front panel so i'm working across the front here and this is called the anika top by showroom crochet really really cute i need to crochet two of these guys and then i'll pick up around here for a cute little like crossover situation um, for a placket and then the collar itself and then the sleeves and then there's ribbing on the bottom i'm just in like a cream color because I feel like this finished is gonna be very take me to a resort Jonathan that's the name of my husband I'm sorry for anybody else whose name is Jonathan and they were like just literally got scared just now like girl what <laughs> I just think this is gonna be so freaking wearable. It gives so much summertime. It is really, really lovely against the skin. And it reminds me distinctly, distinctly, distinctly of like things my family members would wear in Puerto Rico when it's hot as Hades' hair. All right, so that's all the crochet. How many more projects do I have? God bless it. Oh, just one more. I really think that this is probably the most unique project that I'm working on. It is also an intarsia project. And this one is a shawl. It's called the Cecil shawl because it is so cool. I am still very, very like early days in this shawl. But as you can see, there is some intarsia happening and I want you guys to like catch this color shift that's happening here. You're using a lace weight held with a fingering weight, but you're using it specifically to create blocks of color. You can see here I've added in a first color. This here is my second color, but it's overlapping. So they're doing a cool marling situation in this corner. And then eventually as the shawl continues to grow in this direction, <laughs> 
this will have a, this color over here will have a moment to shine on its own when this little intarsia block is done. It's very abstract, um, geometric in nature. Could probably also take this pattern and just take the um, the measurements of the like the actual shawl itself and then marl in whatever way you saw fit. Like you don't necessarily have to follow the patterns and the marling that she suggests. You could use her pattern for the shawl as a blank canvas and then just let your little creativity fly. I chose like a pinky cream background. I think this is a little bit bougie, isn't it? It's a little bit bougie. Again, Magpie Fibers, Swanky Sock, and this is Plume um, Cashmere Lace. <laughs> Oh, I promise I won't do this again in an episode. But I want to show you guys the colors that I picked because I think they're really pretty. But in order to do that, I have to clean up this mess that I've created. So this is that very like soft, oops, soft, creamy, pinky base. It's very much like a very ballet type of pink. And the colors that I am going to use to create my abstract shapes are these right here well that's a repeat are these right here god i think they're so freaking cute it definitely looks kind of close to my other sweater the gerhard sweater it's kind of giving that same vibe but we're doing it on a cream instead of on a brown so this guy here is strange brew mint condition into the mystic and say chic they're making me super super happy i think they're gonna look so cute on the background of this like it's just giving like happy pops of color. I can imagine this pattern in specific in a million iterations. I think it would look beautiful in neutrals. I think it would look beautiful in jewel tones, beautiful in pastels. Beautiful if you use like variegated yarn that you happen to have in your stash and you're like, I don't know what the hell to do with this. Make it an abstract little block on this Cecil shawl. I think it would look so freaking cute. Um, just an easy way to stash bust if you've got random lace weight shenanigans hanging around in your stash. Get rid of them, girl. You got knit dosette. You got crochet them. Do some I feel like I've been talking for approximately 75 billion kajillion years. But if you're still here, you're still rocking with me. Number one, I appreciate you. Number two, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, why? I thought we were friends. <laughs> hit the subscribe button if you're feeling it. Hit the like button if you like this video and you want me to make more of them. And leave me a comment if you have any questions or just want to give me a little, a little motivation to actually finish some of these because there was a lot today, y'all. I'll see you guys in the next one. The next video, we're going to do some like adventures. I think because I'm not able to do these podcast updates as often, we will do like a finish my freaking craft room with me because that's where we are now. <laughs> and it's a shit show. <laughs> I also recently got a spinning wheel and I don't know, I don't know anything. Tashi, she's kind of invited herself, but also I desperately want her to come um, down from New York <laughs> to come visit um, so that we can have a full on let's watch Kayla spin terribly date. <laughs> With me and Sam and I can't wait for it and so maybe we'll record some of that you know just all the shenanigans up on the screen you'll see some other videos that I've made before that you might be interested in watching and just in case you forgot you're making is artistry and don't let nobody tell you different and if they do you can send them to me I'll take care of that for you <laughs>